Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting quartic equation. We have x to the fourth power plus 8x equals 7, and we're going to be solving for x values. Now, take a look at this equation. If 8 and 7 were switched, wouldn't it be nice if we had x to the fourth plus 7x equals 8? Because in that case, the sum of coefficients would be 0 if you put 8 on the left hand side, or 1 plus 7 equals 8 would give us x equals 1 as a solution, and then we could reduce the power and look for the cubic solutions, right? But that's not the case. But we can still handle this problem because this is a very, very depressed cubic. We're missing x cubed and we're missing x squared. So let's see how we can solve this in two different methods. First method, I'm going to go ahead and use a special way of factoring these kinds of cortics. So I'm going to go ahead and put the 7 on the left hand side. And then since I, I'm missing x cubed and x squared, I'm going to write this expression as x squared plus some constant squared. And obviously this is going to bring in x to the fourth as well as x squared. And then I kind of have to subtract it. And while I do, I need to make sure there is no term with x cubed. And that can actually be done if you go ahead and subtract 2a times x minus another constant squared. Now notice what happens with this. We're going to get 2ax squared in the middle here. And that is just going to cancel out with the 2ax squared. We have to determine a and b, those are constants, not necessarily rational numbers. They could be irrational as well. But let's go ahead and expand the right hand side and then set it equal to the left hand side. Find the values for a and b and see where we can go from there. All right, expand it. You're going to get x to the fourth plus 2ax squared plus a squared and then minus 2a times x squared minus 2b, or not 2b, x plus b squared. If you go ahead and distribute, you're going to get x to the fourth power plus 2ax squared plus a squared minus 2ax squared plus 4abx minus 2ab squared. Notice that the 2ax squared is going to cancel out. That was actually the goal. So we can go ahead and cancel them out. And then write this as x to the fourth power. And then notice that there's only one term with x, so 4abx. And then we have these two constants, a squared and minus 2ab squared. And this is supposed to equal what? This is supposed to equal x to the fourth power plus 8x minus 7. Awesome. From here, we should be able to solve for a and b. Let's see how we can. So I'm going to go ahead and set the coefficient of x equal to 8 and set the constant term equal to negative 7. This is going to give us a system. 4ab equals 8 implies ab equals 2. And the second equation gives us a squared minus 2ab squared equals negative 7. So we have a system. How do we solve this system? Easy, by substitution. Notice that from the first equation, you can isolate A or B. Which one is better? I'm going to isolate B. If you want, you can isolate A as well. Same thing. Now, let's go ahead and isolate B and write it as 2 over A. And then we're going to go ahead and plug it in here. Isolating B is somewhat better because we only have one B in the second equation. So a squared minus 2a times b squared. b squared is going to be 4 over a squared, which is going to simplify. So we can go ahead and cancel out one of these with this. And that gives us a squared minus 8 over a equals negative 7. Remember what I said about the sum of coefficients being 0 and 1 being one of the solutions? That actually happens here. Why? If you just look at it, you hopefully saw that a equals 1 is a solution, right? But let's go ahead and turn this into a cubic equation. Multiply everything by a. a cubed minus 8 equals negative 7a. And I'll put 7a on the left. 
and then yes, you're going to get a polynomial whose sum of coefficients is zero. Therefore, a equals one is a solution. But that's not the only solution because this is a cubic, right? But for our purposes, a equals one is gonna be important. You'll see why in a little bit. Now let's go ahead and factor this expression using the factor theorem because a equals one implies that a minus one is a factor. So I can kind of rearrange the terms here and write this as a cubed minus a plus eight a minus eight equals zero. And from here we get a times a squared minus one which can be written as a plus one times a minus one. I hope you recognize difference of two squares here. And then of course, a minus one is supposed to be a common factor if we did it right. So now a minus one can be factored out and that should give us a times a plus one, which is a squared plus a plus eight. Great. Now a equals one is a solution, we knew that, but what about the other solutions? The other solutions are gonna be coming from the quadratic. And if you solve the quadratic by using the formula or otherwise, you're gonna get negative b plus minus the square root of b squared one minus four ac, which is actually gonna give you square root of 31i. So in other words, the other solutions are not gonna be real. And guess what? We want them to be real, okay? So we don't need them. We only need a equals one, that's pretty good. Now, what do we do with this? Now we have our factorization because remember, at the beginning we had written this as x squared plus a squared minus 2a times x minus b squared. But wait a minute, what is the value of b? Do we know that? No, but we can find it. If a is one, b is gonna be two, because b is equal to two over a, or their product is equal to two. a, b is two, so if a is one, b is two. Make sense? a is one, b is two, remember that. So now, x to the fourth plus eight x minus seven can be factored as x squared plus one squared minus two times x minus two squared. And if you go ahead and check it out, you're gonna realize that it actually works. One good point here is, is this structure type of factoring always gonna work? No, it's not. It's only gonna work for certain situations, but you can kind of test out for which cortex that are in the form x to the fourth plus a x plus b, or I should probably use other numbers like m and n maybe. Is this factoring going to be possible with uh, a and b being real numbers, okay? Anyways, so now let's go ahead and factor this expression using difference of two squares, and then set it equal to zero, right? We can basically factor it as x squared plus one, and now when you square root this, you're gonna get a root two here, so we can kind of write it as plus root two times x minus two, which is gonna be one of the factors, and then the other one is gonna be x squared plus one, and this time we're just gonna subtract the root two minus, uh, root two times that. And if you rearrange the terms a little bit, you're gonna get the following, x squared plus root two x, plus one minus two root two, so you can kind of write it as one minus two root two. And then the other factor is gonna be x squared minus root two x, plus one plus two root two. Make sense? Okay. Who would guess that these would be the factors of this kind of expression, right? Anyways, so from here, by setting this equal to zero, and then using the quadratic formula, you could solve for x values. For example, let's just do one of them and you can do the other one, all right? It's left as an exercise, don't you love that? So negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is gonna be two minus four ac is going to be that, and then divide it by two. If you simplify this a little bit, this is gonna give us eight root two, and then let's see, plus minus eight root two, two minus four is negative two, and then we're gonna get a very radical expression. The other ones are gonna be similar, but you get the idea, hopefully. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method now. The second method obviously uses a different idea. Do, would you allow me not to complete it because we already taken too long for the first method, but I'm pretty sure you can handle this. But here's the thing. Since we're missing x squared, I mean x cubed and x squared, I'm going to uh, write this as a product of 
two polynomials, two quadratics, and I want them to look like this. One of them is going to be x squared plus ax plus b, and then you know the other one is going to go like x squared minus ax, and the reason behind that is to get rid of the x cubed, because if you don't have an x cubed, we can actually uh, make it happen by using opposite coefficients. And then, what is the constant going to be? We also have a shortcut. Since their product is negative 7, we can kind of replace this constant with negative 7 over b to reduce the number of variables that we have to deal with. We only have two variables. Go ahead and distribute. You're going to get an equation, find the values of a and b, and you'll have the same thing. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.